What's up, YouTube? You're live behind the scenes of my podcast recording. I'm giving away this Apple iPhone 7 Plus 256 gig black iPhone, and we're gonna be talking about how to start your own business for under 100 bucks. And should we're gonna ask the question? I need your answer. I already gave 100 bucks away. I PayPal'd. Should we be tearing down these Confederate statues and other controversial statues? Okay, so let's get started on the podcast. You are behind the scenes. You can uh, listen to my podcast on iTunes. Tell me, do we need the slate? You have the slate? Yeah. Are you doing something else? Uh, I was just making sure yeah, YouTube got up there. Yeah, YouTube's okay. up. You'll see when you see comments. Yeah, Dred Scott, I just sent somebody 100 bucks for yeah. knowing Dred Scott was the name of the decision in the 18, it was a little before the Civil War. I think it was the 1850s. It was the precursor to the Civil War. Missouri, it changed the way. Are you slating there? Yeah. Okay. Boom. Hollywood. Okay, here we go. Welcome to today's podcast. I'm Ty Lopez. I've got Zach Cookman and Rome here. We're talking about how to start your business for under 100 bucks. Can it be done in the modern world? And we'll be talking current politics, big news. Should we be tearing down Confederate flags? Donald Trump says no, it seems like, and most of the rest of America seems to say yes. Uh, although there is quite a few on both sides. So we wanna have Zach's from the South, me and Rome are from California. I did live in the South, so we'll be talking about our opinion. But let's start up, let's, and we're streaming live. If you're, watch, if you're listening to this later, we're live on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. I recommend you watch me live sometime because I interact and can answer your questions. So here, let me just break this down for you. I have a program called the Millionaire Mentor Program. It's actually closed right now. So I opened up a small test group for one week. I said, anybody who applies and is accepted, I'm gonna train, I'm gonna personally mentor you for the next 12 weeks about what I learned from my millionaire mentors and what I've learned as somebody who's made, you know, many millions of dollars in business. And so uh, we have a test group of people and I'm in the midst of doing that right now. Now, like I said, you can't join now, it's closed. Um, but the cool thing is, I'm getting all these people who are like very interested. And one of these guys said he's, Ty, I have a very important question to you. And we do a live call every Tuesday so I can talk to them personally. And the, the, the test group, everyone's on it. He said, I got a hundred grand, I'm about to invest it all in leasing a coffee shop or a location for a coffee shop because I want to be in the coffee shop, coffee business. I believe in it. I'm passionate about it. I think there's a lot of money. Look how much money Starbucks made. He said, do you think it's a good idea? And I, I asked him, is this your first business? Are you experienced? Because it does matter. And he said, no, this is his first business. He's not experienced. So I said, this is an absolute mistake. You're going to put a hundred grand down and it's very bad odds. It's possible you'll win, but it's like playing a slot machine in Vegas. Nine out of 10 times you go home disappointed. So that's actually the statistics for most people who start a business. So what I said to him, I said, how can you shrink your idea down to a very small test? So I said, why don't you just start a coffee delivery company out of your kitchen? You can look up the laws. You, I don't even know if you'll need a inspected kitchen for coffee. If you're gonna make egg salad, you need to have a, a most states of the United States depending on what country you live in, you might not need an inspected kitchen. But even an inspected kitchen is not that expensive. It doesn't cost 100 grand. I said, why don't you make a little delivery business, go to local businesses around you, say, I'll deliver you the best coffee, home brewed, and, all, and you pay a delivery guy, and you, get, you bring 10 cups of coffee into little offices all around you. Now, you're not gonna make a million bucks doing that, but you can start that business for under $100. You take $80 and you buy coffee, you take your car, you put $20 worth of gas, and you can even start out doing it for free. Never underestimate the power of free sampling. If you study, uh, there's a great book called Born, uh, Made in America, it's the true story of Sam Walton, it's his autobiography. Sam Walton started Walmart, which in terms of making money, of the last 100 years, the wealthiest man ever, more than Bill Gates and Zuckerberg and all them was the, the founder of uh, Walmart, Sam Walton. He's worth $160 billion. He had his money divided up in trust, so it wasn't on his name because he wanted to reduce taxes, but his total 
net worth was 160 billion if you counted up all those family trusts. So, and, and if you look on the Forbes list, his family's still the wealthiest in the world. What did he pioneer? Will you go to the store and they got samples. So I said, dude, buy 50 bucks worth of coffee, 80 bucks worth of coffee. Make a little, you already, he already had a brew, you know, he was already making his own coffee at home for himself. Make 50 cups, go down to a local strip mall or a local commercial office building. Everybody loves free stuff. The most Googled, the most Googled uh, basic ad, adjective in the world is free. People type in free this, free that, free that, you know, or low price. That's why Groupon became a massively big, you know, massive company, a billion dollar company in under two years because they weren't completely free, but they cut your costs down 70%. So that guy was like, thank you so much, Ty. Now, I said, save your money. You will need that 100 grand, but maybe you don't even need to lease a building. Maybe you pioneer a whole new approach like Uber Eats to coffee. Maybe you invent a new app called, you know, coffee, coffeerun.com or something like that, or an app. That's kind of cool. People type in, and especially if you make higher quality coffee, then they can get at Starbucks and stuff. So there's an example where for a lot of you guys thinking of making money, starting your own business, what you're doing wrong is you're getting ahead of yourself. Go up one stair at a time to get to the top of the staircase. When you start leaping from one step to the next, if you don't believe me, I challenge any of you, hopefully no one is stupid enough to take me up on this, but I challenge any of you to go down to a local stadium, a local track that has concrete stairs, put your hands behind your back and jump seven stairs at a time to the top with your hands tied behind your back. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. Half of you are gonna trip, fall, break your face. We had a teacher when we were in high school, <laughs> Randy Thompson, boy. He ran up the concrete stairs with those books. He had books in his hand and he tripped and he landed on a concrete stair, boom, on his nose. And he says one of the worst pains, worst surgeries ever. Well, that's the equivalent of this coffee guy who's gonna take a hundred grand just to open a dumb location which has no product differentiation, no new trend. Like what's new about a coffee shop? There's coffee shops everywhere. There's no competitive edge, there's no competitive advantage. So use your brain to figure out how to go up one stair at a time. People think that I look up to people or we should admire people who take massive risks. I admire people who take smart risks. Massive risk is going to Vegas this weekend, taking your life savings, going to the, to the um, roulette table and putting it all on number five. I mean, that's a huge risk, but do you think I look up to those people? I think they're morons. I mean, you're not a moron to go to Vegas if you know you're gonna, like I will go to Vegas and know, all right, I'm gonna lose five grand and I don't care. It's just fun. You know, it's just fun, okay? So business though is different. This guy wasn't doing the coffee business for fun. It wanted to be his livelihood. So be very high brain intensity. I mean, use a lot of this neuro, neuro uh, I mean, uh, they call this the MPFC, right? That's the part of your brain that's logical, medial prefrontal cortex. That's what makes us different than a snail. You know, a lot of people got a damn snail brain. A snail has like the part of the brain that we have in the back, the primal brain. It's like your, your, obviously a snail doesn't have exactly, it's not a mammal like us, but a dog, your dog with an IQ of 30 has a brain stem and so do we humans. And that's how most people live just off the brain stem. They go, oh, well, uh, I want to start a business. So well, I got a hundred grand that I inherited or a hundred grand that I saved. Um, I want to do coffee. Uh, let's spend it all. Well, why, why not conserve it? and use it, the wise general conserves his troops and deploys them at the strategic moment. Only the idiotic general takes his whole forces and puts them all out. If you look at guerrilla warfare throughout history in Vietnam, you know, Vietnam War, where a small country like Vietnam beat, basically beat the United States, really the only one of the only wars that America didn't do so well in terms of we kind of, we didn't make we didn't say we retreated but we did it went, did not go well for us um, the Korean War Korean War didn't go well and if you look at what they did on the Vietnamese guerrilla warfare side the North Korea uh, the, the the northern Vietnamese army that was communist 
they basically conserved their forces. So we never knew you would go and bomb everything and they were just pouring in more forces. That's how you have to be with your money. You have to deploy it selectively as if you are a military leader of your own life. Okay, a very common question. Ty, I got 10 grand, I got 20 grand. You should be able to test your business idea for under 100 bucks. People say, no, that's not possible. I wanna start an app. Well, before you do an app, make a simple lead pages web page Email it to 20 of your friends with a coming soon email address. If nobody puts their email in to get on the list for when it launches, this is probably a stupid idea. And you did it for under 100 bucks, you tested it. So the key is, when I say launch a business for under $100, there are some businesses you can't launch, but you can test, validate, pre-approve for under 100 bucks. Any idea. I'm just gonna do a challenge right here. I want anybody here to disprove me. I'm open to the opposite side. I like to test my theories. So can anybody here come up with a real business? Not Don't be stupid. Some of you are stupid. Who has a, try to throw the most complicated business at me and let me see if I can come up with a way to validate a lemonade stand. Okay, I, uh, this dude ain't smart enough to know how to start a lemonade stand for under 100 bucks. You can have the worst lemonade stand in history. <laughs> Insurance business, be specific. Restaurant, okay, here's how to start a restaurant for under, under 100 bucks. Remember, the restaurant industry is big, multi-billion dollar industry, but it's saturated. There's a sh how many restaurants are there? I don't care where you live, in a third world country, there's restaurants everywhere, or there's food trucks, or people selling on the street. So, what you do, invite 30 of your friends over for free food. Cook five different types of meals that you're good at. So let's say you know how to cook sushi, cook sushi, you know how to do barbecue, barbecue, you know how to do a vegan plate, you know, and then put the five plates out. Then stand back all night and just watch people coming. Which type of food gets eaten first? Which one do they come back for seconds? That just it wouldn't be a sushi that's cooked because you don't cook okay. sushi. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> I got Zach here as the fact checker. He's the myth buster. Ha ha! I got you, Ty! I Googled it real quick. <laughs> he Googled sushi. What is sushi? Oh, but you can if your Chinese food's all gone, people all coming back and they're asking for more and they don't touch your vegan stuff, don't start a vegan restaurant. Start a sushi restaurant or start a, so you can, and that costs you about a hundred bucks. For a hundred bucks, you can feed 20 people, you know, or 10, you don't even need a hundred people there. And that's your first validation Ah, okay, I'm a little better at Chinese food. Then you can double validate. So now that's your first hundred dollars. Now you're, to me, you're in business. Someone said cocaine and cocaine, et cetera. Do people get in the cocaine business for under a hundred bucks? Come on now. That's Did they say cocaine and cocaine, cocaine accessories? accessories. <laughs> car sales, well you can validate, you can work at basically, car dealerships are commission based. So they're gonna let you come work at a car dealership for under a hundred bucks, but that's not starting your own business. A bank. Oh, you can take 80 bucks and lend it out to your friend. Then you see if you want to be in a banking business. Banks lend money and they got to get good at reading who's going to not give them the money back. That's what a bank does. A farm. Easy. Go volunteer at a farm. Easy. You can form a, put a garden in your backyard. See if you like it. T-shirt sales. You can drop ship T-shirts now. That means you don't have to pre-print the T-shirt until someone orders one. Network marketing, that definitely can be done for under 100 bucks. Now, some network marketing, you gotta spend 200 bucks. But there's ones that are less. And if you're good at sweet talking, I guarantee you, you go to some network marketing and you're like, listen, da da da, they'll give you a damn kit. It all depends if you have persuasion power. Porn, you can definitely get into porn. Zach, when he was a very famous male stripper, he got in it for under 100 bucks. I don't know about very famous. What was your stripping name, Zach? Uh, Mr. Bojangles. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody wants to know why he was called <laughs> Mr. Bojangles. <laughs> well, it was it was more of a, an artistic thing, like a, uh, you know, I'd, I'd get up and rub grease. All oh over. God! All right, let's change the subject before we start losing followers. Followers instantly dip on all the live streams. Um, 
Social media marketing you can certainly start for under any service-based business can be started for zero dollars. Insurance you can do insurance. I started in insurance sales, one of my businesses when I had no money. Girls gone wild. <laughs> Zach was a fluffer. Somebody said. <laughs> is, is that uh, Roger? What was that, Roger? What? Oh, I don't know. It said I was well. I was making the joke. Oh, it? that you knew him. Knew he was in the industry you. with you. Yeah. Open a Lamborghini store for a hundred bucks. Um, okay, you got me on that one. You can't start a Lamborghini dealership for a hundred bucks, but you can do cars. You can go buy junky cars. There's people. I'll tell you. Okay, let me take that back. You can get in the Lamborghini business. There's people who have Lamborghinis that want to consign them and swap out for a better Lamborghini. Okay, I got a Ferrari that I might be doing this on. I got a. I have a. Um, a spider, you know, now they have the 488. So I might get the uh, 488 and versus the 458. So what you do, if somebody came to me and said, Ty, I'm a master salesman. Let me go out. I'll put the ads for you. You pay for it. I'll do all the grunt work for you. I'll be like your assistant helping you sell a Ferrari or Lamborghini. I'd be like, hell yeah. And, and then he'd say, only pay me if I sell it. And then we split some of the profit. If a guy said, dude, 30%. Of the what you make on reselling a Ferrari, because I I want to swap the Ferraris. I don't care about profit. I just want a 488 without having to spend another hundred grand on it. So if a dude said, "Man, I'll get somebody to buy your 458 Spider," I got a red one. A lot of people want that. I'll sell it for you for 300 grand, and you can take that 300 grand and get a 488, a used 488. I'd be like, good. And if there's 20 grand of profit, I'd basically give the dude the whole 20 grand. So. You're wrong. You can't. You, you didn't do it correctly. You can get in the Ferrari and Lamborghini. You just can't start. Here's the deal. You can get anything you want. You just can't get it instantly. But you can build up to it. You can build up to it. So you can't instantly have a Lamborghini dealership, but you can instantly be in the Lamborghini sales business. Online casinos. Yeah, you can do, uh, dude, online casino. Again, my business partner, John DeWar, when he was 12 years old, had a casino <laughs> running in the attic of his house. He was making, this is crazy, he was making two to four grand a month in like the 70s at 12. And then his, which is a crap load of money when you're 12, and because you got no bills. And he, his brother, older brother got jealous and set it on fire one day. And that was the end of his business. But he started that for under 100 bucks. Ty, what about starting a gym? Again, you can get anything you want, but you can't get the total thing instantly. So you can't start a full-on gym for 100 bucks. What you can do is become a personal trainer for under 100 bucks. If you're in a little bit better shape than everybody, you can charge three of your buddies or three older people or three fat people. You can be like, listen, I work out at 6 in the morning. I'll come. We'll meet at the park. You know, you can. there's so many gym stuff things that were at the park. You go to a free space and you say, We'll meet you in the gym and we'll do a CrossFit or we'll do like a, you know, one of these kind of all natural workouts where we'll do push-ups, sit-ups, the marine thing. And you lead it. You start that for under $100. You start that for $0. Somebody else, what else? What about a book? You can certainly write a book for under $100. Bucks. I can, there's nothing, there's no industry you can't validate and test. Okay? Now, let's do a quick giveaway here of $100. I'm going to PayPal one person $100, and here is the question for you. We're going to switch. We're going to come back to this subject. If I see a lot of questions coming in on how to start a business for under $100. Um, I'm going to talk on that, but I'm also going to, I want to talk a little bit of current events because to make money, you got to be smart. To be smart, you got to know what the hell's going on in the world, and you have, because remember, even if you don't need it for your business, when you bump into someone in a business networking setting, if they ask you about current events and you sound like an idiot, they're not going to do business with you. They're not going to. You're not going to get the joint venture. You're not going to get the investor investment in general. You rise up in life by other people being impressed by you. What impresses you in somebody? Somebody who's intelligent, cogent, aware, all those things. So that's why I want to talk about that a little bit in my podcast. So the first hundred dollars um, giveaway. Here's the question for you because we're switching gears towards this, should there be Confederate statues for a second, then we'll come back to money. 
Um, let's do a history question. I love history. You guys got to learn history if you want to be do big things. Learn the cycles so they don't repeat or so that you can predict the future. What happened? Oh, I need to look this up myself. I'm going to ask you a question that I don't even know. Um, this is going to be a tricky one. Okay, speaking of what year was Martin Luther King Jr. assassinated? Go. There is what the answer. What year was Martin Luther King Jr.? There it is. 1968. Congratulations. What was that guy's name? I got it. I'll look it up right now. It was, Mar it was April 4th, 1968. Martin Luther King Jr. That was a, a turning point or a, you know, in the, as you think back through civil rights, this question of Confederate stuff. This has been a burden on America in all senses. Not a burden, but maybe a blight on America and other countries, I'm going to add. America is not the only country with slavery. Slavery had been going on everywhere for a long time. But America was a country that was supposed to be founded on the thought that every, you know, everybody's free. Everybody's independent. So it was a hypocritical thing. If America just came out and said, we're the Roman Empire and we don't give a shit about slaves and we didn't have a constitution, then it would still be wrong, but it'd be not hypocritical. So the United States, 100, 200 plus years, this has been an issue. And now it's a domino effect. So there was Baltimore, they just tore down Confederate flags. They com Tore them down in, I mean, statues. They tore them down in Raleigh, Durham. You saw that, Zach? Mm -hmm. Where Zach's from. And I lived for a while. They're tearing them down, obviously, in Charlottesville, Virginia. So I want a question. I don't want to hear from both sides. And I'm not going to make fun of either side. Okay? I like to... One of the marks of a refined, intelligent mind is even to be able to listen to idiotic ideas. Okay? You can reject them quickly. But I think as long as somebody's coming at it with an actual opinion, not trying to be an a-hole, I'm w willing to hear anything. And uh, I think the media sometimes cuts off people too quickly and a little bit of bandwagon -y, even though I'll start out by saying I think there's – I don't see what the big deal of tearing down the statues. I mean who cares? If it bothers people, tear it down. It's not a great – it doesn't make America great that we have confederate – it's nothing. It's a – it's like a pimple. Pop it. Get rid of it. It's ugly. There's no upside to it, and there's a lot of downside. And it does make sense. Why commemorate people? Now, I will say, to be fair, Abraham Lincoln, who was on the North, was not totally against slavery. He just didn't want the expansion of slavery. The Emancipation Proclamation came much later. So even people we look up to, George Washington, these people, they had slaves. Make no mistake. So basically, everybody in the 1700s and 1800s, with the exception of a few abolitionists, a very small, they're all guilty. And your parents and grandparents lived in a society, and odds are they weren't protesting in the 1950s and 60s. Okay? So by that, it's easy to point fingers, you know? But there's a lot... Someone's going to point a finger at what we're doing today. You mark my words. In a hundred years, people are going to look back. Your great-grandchildren are going to look back at us right now and go, look at these hypocrites. They said this and they, you know, destroyed the coral reefs. We've destroyed the coral reefs, probably. They do. Extinction of mass, you know, extinction of animals. So who here, is there anybody who has an intelligent argument for why you think we should not be tearing down statues? Let's start with the with the not so popular side. Zach and Rome are here, you can interject. Or is any, do you, either of you take the stance that there's nothing wrong with the statues? I mean, I believe they should be torn down. So Rome is more on my side, yeah, tear the things down. Yeah, I believe they serve no purpose. They're equated with history. I mean, with uh, racism. And we still deal with that today, so why, Right. Why, why? Why rub why, it in? Yeah. Why would you keep them up? I okay. mean, I understand some people from the South relate to it as Southern pride and so on and so forth. But when you have dealt with it, right, then it has a different impact. If you've never dealt with it, then 
Right. You know, you're probably not going to, you probably don't even really get it. But if you've dealt with racism, then you have a better understanding of it. And For those of you listening and not looking, Rome is African American. So he's given an opinion Hello. from somebody who's dealt with it before. <laughs> and we're going to go here to Zach, who is the opposite of African American. He is <laughs> very <white>. pale. In <laughs> fact, we have to adjust the contrast on the monitor because no one can see him. <laughs> they, they call me into white balance, the cameras. <laughs> so what's, what's your opinion here, Zach? Um, I, well, I definitely think it's a, it's a very uh, complex issue. I don't think it's simple. Um, I don't think we should be tearing them down, but not from a place of supporting uh, what the Confederacy stood for. Um, so you're more on the I history side, just keep them up more, as historical? More, I think more for the history element aspect of it. I do think that uh, uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that I think should be factored in, such as the people, Robert E. Lee, for example, it was his statue, I believe, was one in Charlottesville, yep. Virginia. Um, he was against slavery. It wasn't... It he wasn't was just fighting thing. because it was his homeland. Right, and I feel like that uh, sometimes people... Is that just, actually true? He couldn't have been completely against slavery. He fought for well, the South. He act, well, he, when his father passed away, uh, he inherited his father's slaves, and he freed them. Freed them, right. Yes, so, but he didn't want... He did not agree with the North, which wanted mass emancipation for all people. He didn't want the well, North to I be think, able to tell. I think... Uh, I, I'll read... I, I, I could be... And feel free to correct me, but... Um, his his perspective was that he supported his home state of Virginia, right? And it was for states' rights. It was more against um, the, the the federalism or, or federal overreach, right? So, um, yeah, I think you have. In other words, I don't think you just go. You, uh, that's not the divide. I think between North and South, because you did have people in the North that also were owners. And then you had people in the South that were not supportive of it. So, um, Bryce Davis, say, 99, Zach, on yours says the Civil War was more of, was about a lot more than just slavery. So that's what some people say. The but Civil that's War, not to dis. No, he's on your to, side. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. But I'm saying that's not to say, um, or it's not to diminish that variable of what was in the Civil War. Uh, I, so I, I feel like it's it's dangerous to start tearing down the history, because I think what we can do is also look at it as a, um, I think something that could be factored in is the fact that we went to war to end it. We were one of the first major countries to actually, I think Britain was the first, right? To yeah, but Britain didn't go to war. Slavery. Britain just... But we actually went to a, a war to, there were people that died to end it. Um, so yeah, but you're I, not I commemorating think, think, them. Well, there's, no, there's statues. No, but they're not tearing down ones of Ulysses Grant, who was a slave owner. Yeah, but he fought on the he fought no, on the I, war. I understand that, but everybody. So I'm my telling point, you, my point was saying I I would take the side of not tearing it down is more for the history of it. We're, but can't you just have them in museums? History. Can't you just have them in museums? Why did that? Well, you know what? I'm actually I wouldn't be opposed to uh, uh, somebody, uh, the government, or somebody. Uh, having some sort of, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a law, but to remove them. I'm more, I don't like the, the uh, going and tearing it down and the kicking and the... the uh, so you're the saying if they do it at are, night, it's fine? Well, I'm not saying behind closed doors, but I, I think do it peacefully. Why not have people vote on it? And if, and if the state votes on it to take the statue down, you do that. Well, I we think, see what happened last time. People took votes. We ended up with a president. <laughs> Rome well, is not a but, big Trump but, fan. But then let's go to hold on one second. Let's go to the let's go to the live cameras. We got Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter live. Okay, somebody said. <laughs> someone said statue lives matter. Uh, probably not. Okay. Why were the only ones that cared enough to protest to keep up were dressed in KKK Nazi gear? Keep the statues so we don't remember what we did wrong. That's what someone said. The statues need to be moved somewhere in the city where they can be explained. The North wasn't really fighting to free slavery till the end, Bryce Davis says. 
take them down and put them in the ocean, Raymond Ruiz says. Now, I'll tell you this. Um, to play devil's advocate, I'm not sure the biggest problem in America is the statues. So just to bring this a little bit back to the original conversation about business, how to start a business for 100 bucks, being smart and all that, which led to this Confederate conversation. It's very easy in life to misprioritize things. In fact, in my experience, everybody on here watching probably is somewhat intelligent, right? Even though there's still a lot of it stupid. Intelligent, let's put it this way, more intelligent than my German Shepherd dogs. German Shepherds have IQs around 40 or 50. Everybody here, trust me, if you were able to press the button on your iPhone or Android to watch this, you have at least 100 IQ. Okay, under like about 70, you're literally handicapped people have like 70, 60. So everyone here is smarter than an animal. Even the smartest animal is not as smart as the dumbest person in, on here in terms of logical powers, potential. What are the most pressing American issues? If we rank them right now and we get a bipartisan group on both sides, one to 20, one is the most important issue down to 20 is you know the 20th most part. Are statues in there? So that's why I say, to me, they're not in the top 20. They might be in the top 50, but since they're so easy to remove, just go ahead and remove them and I think it shouldn't be such a big conversation. Now, somebody could argue and say, but Ty, it's symbolic of a rise against racism. So fine, so do it, but still, as somebody, I'm not black and I'm not white, I'm a mix of multi, multiple things. Those statues ain't gonna fix the inner cities. They're not gonna fix white poverty. They're not gonna fix political infighting. They have nothing to do with North Korea blowing up. They ain't Barcelona, we got people mowing people down in cars. It's not gonna fix economic policies. It's not gonna fix the fact that there's $1.2 trillion of college debt in America. That's a big problem. $1.2 trillion. We've burdened the next generation with $1.2 trillion, and they think it's higher to $2 trillion. We have a president situation which half of America is, or maybe more, is absolutely hates. I've never seen this much hate against a president. Approval rating. 34. Right. So let's say there's 50 or 60 percent. Any, any sitting president ever. Yeah, so I mean there's a tremendous, but there's also people who love Donald Trump. So we have extremely, remember what caused the Civil War? An extremely divided country. So are we gonna go into Civil War? I mean, you see it a little bit, obviously not even at 1% of the scale of the Confederate War, but I mean the Civil War, but you have, you know, people in Charlottesville, some of these people you probably know, the kids at school, people are marching with swastikas. So to me, the bigger question is not really the statues. It's all that's going on around it. And I just want to say, like I said, this is more of a business podcast, but I do talk about current events, that it's very important that in life, practical advice, when you wake up, take a yellow notepad. I don't know why I like yellow notepads. I once read Bill Gates figured out how to build Microsoft on nine yellow notepads. So I was like, if it was good enough for Bill Gates, become the richest man in the world, I'll use the yellow one. So I always buy yellow notepads. I buy some big cheap pens. Sit in a chair every day for 15 minutes. This is very hard to do. I mean, this is hard. 99.99% of the planet doesn't do this. Sit in a chair and prioritize the day. Because what inevitably happens is we do what's easiest first. That's why people procrastinate. So I think it's very easy on our personal level, as an entrepreneur, business owner, a parent, a family, whatever you are, it's easy for you to go, oh, that's the loudest we should focus. There's a saying, the squeaky uh, wheel gets the oil. So right now, the statue thing is dominant in the news. I mean, the news right now is about Steve Bannon, O'Bannon today, you know, was fired by, it's Steve O'Bannon, right? Steve Bannon. Yeah, Steve Bannon, not O'Bannon, sorry. Um, you know, he's fired, he goes back to Breivard or whatever the name of that right wing thing. And we got the Confederate things and we got Alex Jones being coffee thrown on him. This is not the most important thing. I'll tell you what's important in America that should be fixed, in my opinion. So if I was sitting down with a yellow notepad 
and I was not thinking necessarily about my own life and business, but I was, you know, whatever, involved in politics, which I'm not, I would go like number one, educational system. Because countries rise and fall based on the quality of the education, how smart the people are. Trust me, that contributes to GDP. It's directly related. If people are stupid, in terms of, when I say stupid, not trained, ignorant, left in the dark, you don't solve anything. You will have high crime. If you look at parts of Chicago or parts of Arkansas, I'm not even talking about black versus white because there's white poverty, black poverty, Latin. You go to Mexico where there's Spanish poverty. Wherever there's ignorance, you have massive crime. Where do you think crime comes from? Poverty, my friend. So what's the most important thing in America? Probably fixing the education system. We got a crappy one. Number two, we have a big problem. There's not enough hospitals in America. I just saw this crazy report where people in rural countries just die like they're giving birth there's no doc there's no they call them food deserts food desert means there's if you go in some ghetto parts of america even here in la if you go down towards south central la i go down there sometimes when i'm going to the laker games i drive through that area. there's no rest there's no grocery stores you know what there is liquor stores and payday loans and exploitative type businesses. That's a big problem. You can't have a large swath of your country, 50, 60 million people in that kind of, that's not a civilized civilization. Um, so that's, that's, that's higher than statues, if you ask me. How about the criminal justice system in America? I just read about a dude, a black guy who got out of prison. He's been served, he has served since 1994, 23 years. He has been in prison for a supposed rape, and right when they did DNA, the scientist says it is in mathematically impossible for this man to be, so they let him out and gave him like a thousand bucks. Hey, we took 23 years of your life. Now, we've had DNA testing for a solid uh, 20 years, but you know what, it costs money, and the government's too busy spending money on tearing down statues and building more military complexes sometimes than they are, what's worse than in, falsely in prison? Just think of anyone here. What is worse than 23 years falsely in prison? You, a fucking statue? Are you stupid as shit? That's my a question for you. Are you stupid? If you had a choice, 23 years, since 1994, you are in prison for a crime you didn't commit, that they could get you out, but nobody's gonna spend the money on a simple $1,000 DNA test, but yet the media and all of the activists are super hyped about a statue. Statues don't do shit. They're inanimate objects. So you see, there's two ways to be wrong. One is to do the right thing at the wrong time. So my argument against the statues, like I said, take them down. It shouldn't be a damn conversation. Just take them apart and focus on the other things. What about this? College debt. We're the only major country in the world that is racking up that much college debt. 1.2 trillion, and when you add in, they say, off the book loans between family members, two trillion. To put that in perspective, that's $2,000 billion. That's more than the entire budget of the military in a year. The, I think the military budget's right under a trillion dollars. How about this next problem on my top 20 list? We have 5% of children under three are, or under five are obese. Mm, if I had a choice between, and 40, 60% of Americans are overweight and about, depending on what you read, 20 to 40% are obese. And they're predicting by 2025, you'll have half of American kids will be pre-diabetic. pre, -diabetic. pre -di fucking you're poisoning your own kids. Okay, so again, when it comes to business, when it comes to solving problems, intelligent people are able to do the right thing at the right time. If your house was on fire with your family inside, would you mow your grass? Uh, I mean, somebody can make the argument, oh, if you wanna have good property values, if you wanna be a good neighbor, you need to mow the grass. Yeah, it is important to mow your grass, but not while the house is on fire. When the house is on fire, you don't care about anything. You don't care about nothing. 
And I think that there's parts of America that are on fire and we forgot about them. And this is why I don't like the media. And this is my main thing. I'm not exactly like Donald Trump who says fake media because I don't think all of the media is fake. CNN, probably biased, so is Fox. The main thing that they do wrong is they chase the sexy headlines because of the way that they're compensated, which is somewhat of a free market thing, but the media often focuses correctly, like they give you actual news, like there are people in Charlottesville wearing Ku Klux Klan outfits, and there are people mowing people down in a car at Ku Klux Klan, and that's a terrible tragedy, but what about the things they forget? You know what they don't want to report on? No one gives a shit what happens to kids in inner cities. That much. How often do you see? Once in a while, you'll see a big Ferguson case. You'll see the, the guy shot in Minnesota. You'll see massive one. But you know that happens every day. But they get bored. You know, in, in Los Angeles, 50% of calls to LAPD is domestic violence. But it ain't going to make it in the news because no one gives a crap about the media. Doesn't It's not a sexy story. But I'll tell you what. Husbands beating up their wives in front of their kids, alcoholism, which is usually what causes domestic violence or a big part of it, it's destroying the mental structure of tens of millions of kids who then become adults and become fucktards. That's what happens. Almost everybody marching a Ku Klux Klan thing, I guarantee you, had some traumatic event happen to them. They are mentally impaired. I, and some of the people on the far left are also mentally impaired. I guarantee you. I'm an amateur student of psychometric tests. I promise you, if I test uh, Alex Jones, if I was to test half the people protesting, there are people with psychological issues. We have to produce a generation that doesn't have psychological issues. I read the newest report. says is, I think it's put up by the American Psychiatric Association, the biggest, the APA. 25% of women in America have clinical mental problems and 15% of men. So one in seven men and one in four women um, have real mental illness. That's another thing we don't talk about because we talk about math, we talk about that when they're homeless. You know, you see homeless people, most of them. But what about the freaking people with mental impairments that are your police officers, that are your government officials? You know, so that's my lo long rant. Somebody said lower women, lower number for women than he thought. He thought it'd be higher than twenty five percent is a high number, man. And there's also, I mean, how what for twenty some years now we've been given uh, kids drugs, pump them full of drugs. Yeah. Uh, who's to say that's not had some little side effect to cause them? Uh, Depression's at an all-time high, especially for women. Women are more depressed now than they were in the 60s. Which is very interesting, because women now, it's a it's, lot better for them. Yeah, but it's amazing how therapeutic washing dishes and clothes... Don't listen to Zach. And <laughs> sweeping. Zach is the making controversial my person. My, making my dinner, yeah, I'm telling you, that will... This is why Zach is not married. <laughs> all women have kicked him out. <laughs> so, let me ask you. Let's go back here. Top three issues in your life right now. Ty, do you think Alex Jones has mental issues? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, he might be a good guy, but he's not. he ain't playing with the same deck of cards. as you I should. heard that that guy that threw coffee on him was an actor, that it was all staged. <laughs> right in here, I saw it. Did the, did the Rothschilds Illuminati do it? Okay. Somebody said... Number one problem in life, let's do it. If you were to sit down in your chair, like I recommend, with a yellow notepad, what are the three things, be specific, can't just say money, money, money. Like, what's the problem with money? Do you not have a job? Do you hate your job? Medical bills, tuition, work, somebody says. Money, school, and girlfriend. <laughs> is that a problem? Number one problem is lack of deals being made in their business. Somebody said their penis is too small. <laughs> All right. Well, is that the top? Yeah, is that the top of the list? <laughs> <laughs> if there's a solution, what what would what do you advise him, Zach? As Doctor Zach, what's your advice? More testosterone. Does that get rid of the estrogen? grow the size of the of the member? Um, 
date smaller women. Something. Yeah, I got. Uh, this is a family podcast, so I can't go over my suggestions <laughs> in detail. Okay. Someone said, "Listen to KRS One if you believe in the Illuminati." Is KRS One the rapper? Yep. Uh, somebody said they want their biggest problem is how to make an app. Okay, let's do this one. Somebody said their biggest problem is lack of goals. Who here? watching or listening in struggles with procrastination, goal setting and goal achieving and not giving up. And, and I'll just give you, I got a little formula I keep in the back of my head to help me with that because everybody deals with that. Procrastination is solved by ambition. So if you're writing this down, you can make like a little arrows as Zach is doing now as he writes. Procrastination, then put an arrow because the way to get away from procrastination, follow the arrow to the next one, which is ambition. Okay, now, uh, sorry, sorry, I skipped a step. Procrastination and then the arrow to motivation, right? The opposite of procrastination is motivation. Then do another arrow to the right of motivation, the word, and put ambition. Now, to the right of ambition, how do you get more ambition? To the right of that, put the one word, most important word in this conversation, vision, vision. So basically, the only way to overcome procrastination is not to try to motivate yourself. It's not to become more ambitious. That has to come, but you can't work on it directly. The last step, which is really the first step, is increase your vision. So here's what I mean by that. Jeff Bezos, when he worked at his office job, before he started Amazon, and he's now the third richest man in the world, he literally could see in his imagination where Amazon could go. He's like, I could have, you know, I could start out selling books. And then once I sell books, and he had vision, he was like, you know what, people like to go stores, but eventually, why would you want to go to a store if I could deliver it in a package? But how do I get it to people quick enough? You can go to the store same day. And then he had the vision. He goes, one day, maybe I'll be able to deliver it in drones the same day. You see, he saw, this is in the 1990s. He had the vision to imagine what he'd be doing in 2017. So for each of you that are struggling with goals, struggling with procrastination, struggling with motivation, just work on one thing, your imagination. The imagination which gives you vision. So if you wanna write one more arrow to the right of the word vision, write imagination. People can, can imagine things before they happen, okay? Those are the people who will do big things in life. What's a good way to find out or to understand um, that balance between being an idealist and a realist? When do you realize, hey, these aren't just obstacles I need to figure out how to overcome, but I should actually stop? Stop, you mean over-imagining? No, no, not imagining, but um, uh, well, in, being in, example. Trying, in trying to get something done. So give an example. Like pretend hypothetical you wanted to do what what are you struggling what step? uh if someone is trying to start a business okay um and they just can't seem to get any they can't make any headway or actually a good example would be sylvester stallone okay so he was turned down a lot mm -hmm. for his movie but he stuck with he was passionate about his career he would not listen to people tell him no. Or would be a great example too. So, how do you know when you're having the American Idol syndrome? Right. Oh, when, when? Right. 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 So basically, when you're imagining something that's never going to happen. So, for example, if you're 60 years old and you imagine you're going to play pro soccer, it ain't going to happen. So yes. But that's an obvious one. No, 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 no. But I'm just saying, for example, just because you imagine it doesn't mean you can do it. That's what Zach's saying. How do you know when you're imagining something you ain't gonna be able to do? And that is a good question. I would say about 30% of people imagine too much. And so I was speaking to the 70% who don't. If, here's how you know, and this answer is both sides. When you start imagining, you must start doing at the same time. So I'm not a big fan. I literally, this is what I do. I basically imagine for half the day and do stuff for the other half. It's a great little formula. 
It's called the 50-50 formula. I use it for many areas of life. So basically, if you want to start a business, you spend the morning, let's say you wake up at nine o'clock, spend from nine to one sitting in a chair, or I like to play basketball by myself and my, I got a court in the back. I don't like anyone around. I just go back there by myself and I just sit there and think, or I'll go, I just got one of these watt exercise machines. It's like a bike that I guess theoretically generates electricity if you wanted to. But I go on that thing and I just daydream. And then I spend the second half of my day doing this stuff. So then what'll happen is if your imagination is rampant, it's too wild, it's too big, you're imagining, oh, I'm gonna play pro basketball. Well, the first half of the morning, you daydream about playing pro basketball. The second half, you show up at the Clicker, at the Clippers D-League or the Lakers D-League and you say, yo, I'm good. And then you take one shot and the coaches are like, you will never play basketball. <laughs> and then next day, dream something else. That is that is my answer. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So just make sure you balance the thing. 50-50. Excitement attracts others, Rebecca Nam says. Yes, in attracting a team. But actually, let me go back, actually. Nolan Pala said, cool method, Ty. Uh, yep. Go back to the example of a rock, uh, Sylvester Stallone. When he's told by professionals, you ain't got to do this. Yes. That. He didn't listen, well, and he was proven right. Yes, so here's the deal. When you take Sylvester Stallone his acting, here's the key. You got to be intelligent and go, is this something that it's logical that I wouldn't be able to do? See, acting... There's a crap load of actors that aren't the best actors that are the most famous. I mean, The Rock is a very entertaining guy, but he's not going to win an Academy Award. But, or he hasn't yet. Maybe he will one day. But he's very successful. So you have to know your field. If the field is starting a business, trust me, almost any business to make a million bucks, anybody can do. In fact, the average multimillionaire, there's a good book called The Millionaire Next Door. It's a study of millionaires in the United States and what they're like. And most of them do not have a super high IQ. They're slightly intelligent, but not super intelligent, okay? So when it comes to Rocky going, my vision, I can just see myself in this movie about a boxer, and all the pros are like, nah. They're not saying no because you don't have the aptitude. They're saying nah because they already got another actor that they know. So you gotta know your field. If you're trying to be a pro athlete, it's more than just vision. You need to be born a certain way, for the most part. Most pro basketball players are abnormally tall, and abno there's, a, there's something in the human brain called tracking skills. And so if you were to take LeBron James or a pro soccer player like Messi or Ronaldo or Neymar, and you put them under a brain scanner machine, they can do this thing called um, projecting and tracking, and it comes from our ancient ancestors. Most of people think our ancestors all came from Africa. And they could take a spear and there would be a running animal, like a you know, lion or a gazelle or something, and they could predict where the animal was gonna be and throw the spear and the, the hunters who had the more powerful eye, okay, the hunter with the most powerful eye would be able to kill the most animals. Well, professional sports, are basically people descended from those top hunters. So basketball, you're moving, you're shooting a fadeaway, you got somebody in front of you. People like LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, they have tremendous tracking skills. Plus, you know, I was just played on a celebrity football team with Kevin Durant last Saturday or two Saturdays ago. He's also immensely tall and no body fat, which is very rare to be seven foot. He's about 6'11 and a half is my guess. And he has tracking skills, perfect vision. It, it's just, you can't be that except by the grace of God, basically, or the grace of your DNA. But some, most things that you wanna do in life don't matter at all. Starting a business, people go, I'm a woman. I'm a, someone said, I'm 17 years old. I'm like, doesn't matter. It don't matter at all. No one cares. So I think the answer, Zach, is it's, depend, it's industry specific. That's my answer. Somebody said, can he throw the hands though? <laughs> Somebody wrote sleep. What's that <laughs> from? Where the, uh, what's the, the movie we just stop saw? Stop breathing. No, Dark Tower. Yeah, stop breathing. Little side note, what did you think? Movie reviews, real quick. Best movies you've seen in the last month? Uh, Wind River. Wind. 
Wind River. Go see this damn movie, Wind one. River. It Did is. Did you see that one, Rome? Yeah, it's a good movie. You liked it, right? Yeah. What's the second best movie, Rome? What's the movie you liked that you saw? It'd probably be Wind River. I mean, the last movie we saw was was, was cool too. Kind of a chick flick, little Netflix, little Netflix <laughs> Lifetime. What was that called? Glass but was, Castle. But it was cool. Glass, Glass Castle. Yeah, yeah. That one was pretty intense, right? It's definitely. If you yeah, if you've come from a dysfunctional family, you can relate to it. <laughs> you could be traumatized. Worst movie you've seen, Zach? In the last month, somebody put Baywatch. That is not the best movie that has been out. That is one of the worst movies. Baywatch. Sorry to say. Uh, well, within the last month, Annabelle was pretty tough. You didn't like Annabelle. The decisions they had everybody doing just for the sake of suspense and. That that definitely was. You mean like was bad. Was staying in a house that's like <laughs> the best was remember when uh, that one scene where she's at the well and uh, it, you know, there's that scare and then it calms down. Adrian had that that line. He goes, you know, now get ready for bed. <laughs> it's just that whole thing. It's like they that they have characters doing and saying things that you know are just absurd. Wouldn't happen. Just for the sake because they need tension. So I would say within the last month. Unless the producer looks, producers are listening. <laughs> Somebody says it's called Spider Man Shutter Island. I think you're in the wrong wrong uh, year. Twenty one Jump Street, The Human Centipede, War of the Apes. I didn't think that was a very good. Did you like the Planet of the Apes movies, Zach? The War? new uh, the new one. Yeah, I thought the, last the action one. stuff was the, the way they filmed that was fantastic. Jurassic Park. Yeah. We got some people that are not good at movies. Ex Machina, What We Do in the Shadows over the last couple of years are probably two of the better ones. Really? I think so. Well, Ex Machina what, was what, good. What We Do in the Shadows. What about Sicario? Just, Sicario. Yeah. I'm ready for uh, Wind this new movie. River. Just write this word down. Two words. Wind River. It's going to traumatize you. But is it badass? It's not too traumatic, actually. Alien Covenant, somebody liked. Take the family. Narcos. No, don't take the family. <laughs> don't take young kids. <laughs> hey, can you? We gotta reset the Facebook live. You guys hanging in there? Okay. Oh, I'm great. Yeah, Bro, I'm, good. I'm just reading all the comments. It's fascinating. Oh, you can see them up here. Yeah, we put the so YouTube up there. All of our balls names <laughs> said knowledge. <laughs> and then we got it. We also got balls watching. It, it was a picture of him in the center. Hey, did ball. you? See, Rome played basketball with Lavar. Here, you got to reset the Instagram here. Rome played with uh, with Lavar Ball, um, in college. And did you see he he said he can beat Ice Cube? Did you yeah. see that? Yeah, they were at. A, and they, he lost they, they in the four. The yeah, three, right? ready to starting live. Yeah, I don't think they were the one on one. They were shooting from half fours. Court. Yeah. What's up, Instagram? We are back. We're talking about how to start a business for under 100 bucks. Should we take out Confederate flags, political issues, movies? We're getting back to business. We just had to reset. We're resetting our Facebook. This is on my podcast. Make sure you listen to my podcast episodes. If you're on your way to work, man, instead of just listening to music, get a little education, get the brain stimulated. Remember, the people who succeed in life are those who manage their time efficiently. Charlie, you want me to just add part two on the same time? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And we're gonna give this bad boy away. Who wants an iPhone? It's interesting, YouTube stays the most consistent of people's disdain. People on YouTube don't drop off. I don't understand it. Like Instagram goes up and down, Facebook. Somebody said revenue of the nerds. I think you mean revenge of the nerds. Revenue. <laughs> just a business version of it. <laughs> Remember Revenge of the Nerds? I haven't seen that since I was a teenager. <laughs> Back when I believed it was possible to actually have what the you know the, the, nerds, the nerds got the hot girls. Yeah, yeah. So Zach, let, let me ask you this: It can, it can be done. Is your experience that the nerds don't get the hot girls? Do you think that's a lie? Uh, Where girls say they like good guys, nice I guys? I don't know. I didn't hang around a lot of nerds, so I didn't get to know them. <laughs> Zach discriminated. He didn't like. All right. I let's go. Answer any other questions? Look right here. What's up, Facebook? We're back live talking about 
Let's talk. Let's go back to starting a business for under hundred bucks. We were talking political events, current events with Zach and Rome. Rome's reading all the crazy comments. Now you can see how crazy people are. <laughs> we got on the monitor there. We got them just. Uh, someone said Ty hates people on Twitter. Nerds stay in the friend zone. Um, common question guys ask. You know how to get more women. In general, as you raise up your own quality, more quality is attracted to you in all areas of life. There's no mistake. You don't see Rihanna dating people with no ambition. You gotta have some ambition, guys. It's attractive. It doesn't have to be greed, but you gotta have some fire in your eyes, you know? You gotta got something into the step, a little charisma. I have a vision or else you perish. <laughs> Zach's quoting Bible verses. All right, hundred dollars. Let's say you got a hundred dollars you won in my PayPal giveaways that I do. How do you start a business? Well, if you listened earlier, I talked about how you can make a prototype. I talked about walking before you jump up too many steps and fall on your face trying to start too big of a business. Do not invest your full life savings in something that's not validated. So let's talk a little bit more on how to validate an idea. Okay, validation means this. Zach, you, Zach likes Tinder. Are you still on Tinder? <laughs> Zach likes Tinder. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I've never met a girl off Tinder, but Zach is a big Tinder, Tinderizer. That's what I call him. <laughs> Tinder. I, I've met a lot. You've met a lot. Okay, so. But it's for research. Oh, what are you researching exactly? The, the female psyche. <laughs> All right, no comment on that. Um, mating habits? Mating. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, and you also, you, what's the other one you use besides Tinder? Bumble. Oh, man. Yeah, there's Bumble. There's okay, Cupid. There's Match. What's the best one for you? What's the best one? Which one has been the best proven one for you? Um, for marriage material. I would say you stand a, a greater chance with the eHarmony. And if we're gonna go between Bumble and Tinder, I will say that the, the lovely ladies on Bumble are a little more serious-minded, serious relationship. Which There's, one, does one have more attractive? Tinder. What has the most attractive physically, not necessarily the most serious? Uh, I think just because of numbers, it'd be Tinder. Because there's, I think, more on Tinder than on Bumble. So Tinder. I think the numbers are. Because Zach is shallow, he told me. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just, I'm making up for lost time. All right. So, Zach, if, what's the principle? Before you get married, you have to date. It's not a good idea to meet a girl off Tinder, meet a girl off Bumble, and go to Vegas and get married. Have you ever thought of doing that, Zach? Be honest. No, good hell no. No? No, not. You've never thought this is the girl that I love so much. You never had love at first sight? Hell and no. All right. Not Zach. first, no, that's not true. Actually, I have twice. I love how Zach goes never, actually seven times. <laughs> <laughs> One last month, he has a, August 14th. Well, it, it takes my brain a little bit longer to respond when we're talking about actual love. But let's, let's relate this to business. A lot of people get married to a business concept before they date it. So validating your business idea for under $100 is literally like going on a date. Do you spend more than $100 on a date? It depends on what we're doing. Uh, In if, general, if, what, would, if what do you think you spend? We're meeting at my hotel room. Yeah, it's a <laughs> lot more than 100 bucks. <laughs> if it's local, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I definitely try to cap it off at like, you know, Less than a hundred bucks. Yeah, you person. go. You really think about that? No, but I'm saying you go to coffee. You don't well, go yeah, to I'm big not, stuff. You yeah, go yeah, to dinner. You go to sushi. Not going to Bola. <laughs> yeah. On the first date. Yeah. So what you do? You got to earn that flavor. I got a friend who always is like dating these like the worst kind of girls in Beverly Hills in L.A. Just, and he's like, <laughs> he goes, he said a girl asked him like, uh, you better take me to like whatever. There's a place called um, what did she say? Yeah, Boa or. You know, expensive. Bo is a very expensive steakhouse in LA or um, Katana or Katsuya. And I'm going, dude, that's an automatic 
rejection of that any girl who's like uh on our first date you will spend 500 bucks on me i'd be like what that comedian say Tyler? yeah <laughs> i'm not gonna say that like, <laughs> you want the surfing there. turf that comes with <laughs> All right, I won't say that. That's steak and lobster. I like that somebody commented, Jesus is awesome, right in the middle of this. Okay, thank you for staying on topic. But the point is, when you start your business, the reason I like to tell people to start it for under 100 bucks is the same principle as dating. So let's say you want to start a coffee shop. You want to start a food truck. You want to start a t-shirt shipping business. You want to make money on the internet. You want to become a public speaker. You want to, you know, start your own... Uh, car detailing business. You want to start your own social media marketing agency. That's something I've taught over 20,000 people to do in the last seven months, how to, how to start an agency. I'm like, if it costs too much money, it's a warning that, oops, it's a warning that you're making a huge freaking mistake. Just like if your friend comes to you and says he's spent $10,000 on a girl on the first date and he's decided this is the girl he wants to be with for the rest of his life. If you date enough business ideas for under a hundred bucks, let's say you date 10 business ideas, test them, see if you like them. Then you spend under a thousand bucks and you'll know which one you like. And by the way, uh, there's a good book called The Mathematics, I think it's like The Mathematics of Sex by this mathematician lady named Cleo, I forget her full name, but she says the magic number, before you get married you should have 12 relationships or date 12 people and then you take the next best the person who's after the 12 you don't marry any of them and you marry then the next person who comes along who's better than any of those 12 so the first 12 create what's called a baseline you need a baseline to understand so same with starting a business if you start and you devote your life to the first business that you begin you probably don't have a good baseline as to the different ideas you could be doing, you know? So a lot of people become good at the wrong thing. Joel Salton, my mentor, used to say, the worst thing in life is to grow old and realize you got good at the wrong thing. And interestingly enough, I got this cool psychology, I read a lot of textbooks and I read a psychology textbook that said, that, what do you think of the top three regrets, Rome and Zach, of the average human, adult, who's let's say, I don't know, 60 years old, when they look back? Top three, what would you guess? I don't know what the top three would be. I think one would be though, um, things that they wanted to do to, but they just didn't, they didn't do, do it. it. Yeah, they procrastinated. Right. What those things are could vary. Is that taking risks? Taking risks. So I think those are good. I, this particular study said- Education. The career they chose, the education, like major they chose, and who they married. These are huge, because it's like Rome said, it's like things you didn't do, because when you think, oh my God, I married this person, but I really was in love with that girl, but I wasn't, you know, didn't have the balls to ask her out. It's the same with careers. Oh, I, there's someone in my family that always wanted to start a restaurant, and they stayed with a boring job doing computer programming, and they hated it. They were a social person, and they stayed all the way, but they couldn't quit because retirement was coming up, and if I quit now, I won't get my pension, and blah, blah, blah. and they just became 65 years old and look back going, oh my God, how many chances do I get? I got one. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower's wife, or no, 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 Teddy Roosevelt's wife said, what was her name again? Why can't I remember? Uh, I was gonna say Eleanor, but I think that's- Yeah, Eleanor. Twins. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, FDR's wife, Eleanor Roosevelt said, life is like a parachute jump. You only get one chance can't jump, forget the parachute, you, you, you don't go back up. And so the biggest regrets we have are around not seeing the possibilities of all the different people we could have dated or married and marrying the wrong one. At least, I would guess, just gonna guess, at least 50% of people marry the wrong person and my proof would be about 50% of uh, women and men cheat on their husband or wife and get divorced. So it's probably not the world's greatest marriage. So at least 50%. Now, when it comes to job, career, you have a lot of choices in the modern world. Basically, you can go into almost any industry. Okay, even if you can't play pro basketball, you could go in the sports industry as a newscaster or you know, as a manager or a coach or something. So there's a vast array. 
each of us has at least 200 career choices, right? But the problem is, guess what the problem is? Most people don't know how to date, so they marry the first career that comes along. And that's important. So I, want, I would love to create a world of more experimenting, you know, more, more people who are a little bit more of a mad scientist. Like, are you a mad scientist of your life? Or are you just going, well, I mean, my biggest regrets, without a doubt. Somebody asked me the other day my biggest mistakes in business and stuff. And they were asked if I ever went bankrupt. And I was like, knock on wood, I haven't yet. You know, but I was like, my, I do have regrets. They're just like, I should have done this a long time ago. I should have dated more. That's why a lot of people go, Ty, well, is this a scam? Should I try to start a social media marketing agency? Should I try to invest in real estate? My advice is do it all so you can figure out what the hell you like. You got to put in some time, some money, some, that's called investing. Investors put money into shit, even though it might not work out, but they know if they try enough stuff, one of the deals will pop and they'll be super wealthy. That's literally, literally the definition of a good investor. Like a good investor puts money in various places, knowing that one, they'll throw a net out, knowing that fish will be, one fish will get caught somewhere. And you only need to get rich once. So, yeah. Ty, you're my idol. Man, YouTube comes the fastest. Ty, if my business idea takes off, Gareth says, I want to meet you. Okay. Gus Camp verified on Instagram says, Ty, are you investing in anything? I read an interesting uh, report today. Listen to this. Zach or Rome, I'm going to give you a guess. Or... Mel or Sam here. What is the largest industry? Pornography. In the United States. Not even close. Pornography, does, I'm talking about by, biz, by dollars generated. Pornography is not a big business. It's a lot of people watch porn, but it doesn't make a lot of money. Trust me. Well, that wasn't a legit guess. I just oh. wanted to say pornography. From Zach's brief stint as a Director? Fluffer? Oh, a director? <laughs> Were you like a coach slash director? Uh, is it food? No, food is like in the top five. What do you think, Rome? Yeah, I was going to say food as well. Food is big. Is, I'll let is Rome, Rome's mic on? i take my guess of food. And so. I don't know. Somebody said, are you sleepy tie? Someone said Talk Walmart. No, Walmart's not an industry. Technology, uh, getting closer. Gambling, big pharma, retail. Retail's big. Tech, no. Everybody's missing it. Plastics. Energy is the most profitable. No. Plastics. By business, I'm not talking about profit because it's hard to know the problem. General Motors, water. No, water is a $100 billion business. Fashion. People spend $100 billion in the world on bottled water. Oh, That's not very big. Fashion, no. Nope. Retail, yeah. Social media, appliances, infrastructure. I can't believe nobody's getting it. Cryptocurrency, not even close. Airplanes, Real estate? not even close. Oil, not even close. Energy, weapons, nope. All right, I'm gonna put everybody out of their minute. I can't believe nobody got it. All right, I'm gonna give 100 bucks to whoever gets this. Let's roll. We better roll here. Network marketing, not even close. The most oops, revenue generated, there. I'll, I'll pin him. I'll okay. pin him. It's good. Finance. There you can you can video. Gabriel, Gabriel Romero, real estate. I said real estate. When? We'll rewind the podcast. I said real estate. Well, you first said pornography. It threw me off. <laughs> I had to put those images out of my head that you get me distracted. Real estate generates f about 13% of the U.S. GDP. U.S. GDP gross domestic product, how much money is generated in the United States, is around $18 trillion. That's $18,000 billion. Uh, that's a lot. $18,000 billion. And it is around $2.2 trillion is in real estate. So that's real estate transactions. I think, I'm not sure what they include in there. Probably, you know, leases and agriculture somewhat, at least the leasing the land of the real estate. So real estate is massive. 
Now, I don't remember exactly. Why did I bring that up? What were we talking about? The, um... We were talking about... Well, we were looking at the comments. Dating? Oh. And the dating. Dating. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, people ask me, Ty, should I get in your the real estate program you did with Cole Hatter? Well, I think it's actually closed now. It might be open on my website. I'm not sure. But, well, everybody should dip their finger in the test waters of freaking real estate even if you're going to, I've never been a full-time real estate investor, but I've been since probably around 2000, I don't know, about 10 years or more, a little over 10 years. I've always owned some investment real estate besides like a house that I live. I've always been somehow involved in real estate. Again, it's not been the main driver of my income by any means, but it's been a diversification tool. And now, you know, as I get a little more skilled, it gets bigger and I'm working on some big, huge real estate deals now. Very big. We'll see if they go through. Um, but see, that came from dating real estate. You got to date real And I got into it with less than 100 bucks. Just to be clear. I found a business partner who put the money in. I did the work. I found the properties. He put the money in. I didn't have enough money to get in at the beginning. So you should be testing real estate. You should be testing social media. You should be testing sales. 70% of all billionaires in the world were in sales at one point in their life. Whether it be Ray Kroc, or Sam Walton, these guys were in freaking sales. Bill Gates, you know, if you read his teenage years, he was in sales. He was like selling, call, he would cold call businesses and he was so young, he was like 16 or 17. He would literally make his, he would do like the thing where you make your voice deep. <laughs> Like, oh, or you uh, cover it with wax. Yeah, he'd be like, oh, this is uh, Bill Gates here, and uh, I've got a set of computer. And so, sales. So you can't be afraid of testing things, especially real estate is a $2.2 trillion. That's only in the United States. Globally, I'm not sure the real estate numbers. U the U.S., I'm sure, is the largest real estate. So, But globally, it's probably at least 6 to $10 trillion in real estate. And guess what? With the power of the internet and airplanes, you can be, I got a business partner. He just bought a whole bunch of condos in Colombia. I'm not sure it's the greatest investment, but he swears that it's the best idea ever. Got to be careful in some, like if you bought real estate in Venezuela a few years ago, <laughs> now the government takes it back because it becomes communist. So, but dipping the foot in is the principle of today's podcast of why you should be not afraid even if you're rich, to start businesses for under 100 bucks. I start, I try to start, I test my idea. I go on a date with it for the least amount of money. And I'll tell you what I usually spend my money on, the educational side. I literally use my money to pay a mentor, to go to a conference, to go to a seminar, to buy a book. That's how I, I don't spend the money on the business. I spend it on the know-how. If you don't have the know-how, you will fail. Don't forget that. All right, give me one second. Let's unpin, unpin that, unpin that Gabriel Romero. You just gotta like double tap it on Facebook. Caraba said Ty is cute. Okay, completely off subject. I heard somebody I like said, of, uh, somebody said Rome was cute. I saw it. In, those are the ones that Ty I want to highlight those? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When have I ever so, noticed so, that? Ty, you are my idol. Well, thank you very much. Ty, you are very cute. Oh, thank you very much. Zach's a Leo. He's like, why aren't these comments coming in for me? I am bothered. I'm cute too. Uh, Zach, you get plenty of comments. I'm afraid they'll go to your head. Law of Attraction learned from Conor McGregor. Just believe in yourself and know what you're worth. Yeah, Conor McGregor surprised the damn world. Rome, who's, who, you got, who would you put money on? Life... Floyd or Connor? It's coming up next Saturday. I would put my Eight money days. on Floyd. I think his mic. Yeah, his off. mic is off. Let Let's go to Zach and then we'll fix Rome's mic. Connor McGregor or or Floyd Mayweather. This is a an ignorant pick, but I might put money down on the uh, it going the Shanigans. distance. So you not, think not it might go to a win. decision? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you call that bet? What are those bets when you just bet on a, oh, like on a like thing? Prop, prop, bet. prop bet. Okay, Rome. Rome's mic's back on. Rome. I will put my money on uh, on Floyd, of course, but I, I actually do think Connor has a chance just simply because 
it's a fight, and he's used to fighting. Right. And it's not, and Floyd's not going to knock anybody out early. Right. So the longer, if Connor doesn't take him out in the first three or four rounds, like most fighters, then he probably doesn't have a chance. But I think Connor's going to have to be aggressive, where usually he's not that aggressive. Right. He usually kind of sits back and waits, and that's what Floyd does. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting, but Connor's going to, I think he has a bigger point to prove. Right. So he'll be the aggressor. But if I was putting money on it. But Floyd's, he don't want to go 49-1. and one. That would suck. No, he don't. But he the wants kind that. of paycheck he's going to get. <laughs> he doesn't does, care. I'm sure he's going to be okay. Is there anything specific you are kind of anticipating Connor to do as a surprise? Like nobody was expecting that you're thinking, I kind I of. Think you can do of, Superman punches well, think, where you can jump up and punch. I think Connor's going <laughs> to do with really? everything within the realm. He's going to try to be physical. He's going to try to do everything that he could legally do to win the fight. So he's going to, you know, he's probably going to get worn one or two times for doing different things he probably shouldn't do. He's going to headbutt. Yeah, he's just going to do some, you know, within with, within the rules. But I think he's going to come in there dirty. As, Who do you, do you see Connor? Somebody said Mayweather has Mayweather brittle bitch Connor. hands. Yeah, he does have, he has, yeah, his hands are good. And they're fighting with lighter gloves as well, so... What? I don't know if he's just. Hey, I don't. It doesn't make sense to me why they are fighting. I know. Why did he go? It's it's a pride thing. When he has bad hands, but he yeah. feel, he probably feel like well, I'm gonna put hands on him, so at least he's gonna get everything I got. Here's the thing that I'll say. I've been I've been you know I do a little. I'm an amateur, not not on these guys level, but I've been doing some boxing MMA stuff for 15 years something. These two are badasses. Anytime two badasses get in a fight. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. And if you've been watching the UFC, nobody stays at the top. I've been watching UFC. I think I started watching around UFC 12. Right now it's on <laughs> UFC 200 and something. Um, he, nobody stays on top forever. When you put enough badasses in a ring, I remember it went. there was a guy named Mirko Krokop. Nobody could beat this guy in pride. This, he was from, I think he's Croatian or Albanian. He would kick everybody in the head. Then, sure enough, this guy came along named Fedor Emelianenko. Beat him. Then a guy, Minotaro, came. It, there, all, it, no one's, look at Ronda Rousey. So, I wouldn't bet my life on either one of these guys. Now, if one guy was a dud, you know, but neither of these are duds. Conor McGregor is a badass fighter, without a doubt. But Floyd is, you know, a next-level boxer. I mean... Some people would argue he's the greatest defensive boxer of all time. Yeah, I would. You know, if you look at weight classes. Um, he wasn't the knockout puncher. You know, he didn't have the power of a George Foreman or a, or a Mike Tyson. But this dude was no, is no joke. So, don't put your life savings either way. You may lose that damn money. That's, that's I guess, what I would say. I, I don't like to bet on, can you close that? I don't like to bet on things I don't understand fully. And I don't think, since no one's ever seen Floyd Box. I mean, Connor Box. I mean, Connor Box. I mean, they have a little bit, but never against a world class boxer. And he would be considered an amateur. So if he was yes. fight now, he would be considered He'd an be an amateur. amateur. And, and even if he's better than an amateur, Floyd is the king of that weight class. And so. If he beat Floyd, it won't be, it'd be it's going to be how he boxes. It's yes. not going to be pure boxing. It's like that's going to be a little bit of dirty stuff here, yes. physical. Well, I think air. they got rules. I think he can do a flying Superman punch. I think you can, because in real boxing, you can't jump up and punch down. It's against the rules. And I literally read that they they allow that. So God, imagine if Conor McGregor comes flying out of the of the ring and just does a flying punch. Pop. Yeah, that would be. There would be more money changing hands. Well, um, the Illuminati's already decided who's going to win. <laughs> and my gut is it's going to go the distance. That's what the Illuminati has. So you're going to bet anything, Zach? How yeah. to, you could bet $100, and then if that turns into 1000 you could start a 10 businesses using my methods. I will. And I got 10 business ideas up there. What's the best bet? If you, if, you wanna, if you had a gun to your head and you had to start a business, Zach, in, this, in the next 12 months that made $1 million, what business are you going with? For you, you had to do it. Um, within the next year. Yep. And it would have to make a million dollars. Yep. I would say 
uh, a production company or just getting a film done. I know I can. I, I um, so you make a movie, a full yeah, feature yeah. movie. Yeah, that could. Or a straight to Netflix. Netflix yeah. right now, for any of you movie makers, about a million bucks is what they'll pay, even for just an average movie. Yeah. Especially if you have an A-list actor in it, or even like a duddy, you know, an old A-list that used to be A-list. With a flat price, they pay is a million. Yeah, that's for like the minimum. Yeah. So most every like movie, then, movie not a series, but one just movie. one movie. And then it's theirs. You don't get anything. Yeah, you else. get no royalties. No royalties yeah. Somebody said the porn industry is lucrative. Yeah, the porn industry ain't lucrative. Because <laughs> people watch free porn, and these guys that want them. Porn That's, is I would you know who I are? actually know the guys that started most of the free porn in America. They're just business guys. They're in other businesses now. They sold. It's it's not a incredibly lucrative business. I want to know who of your followers still pays. <laughs> Do you have anybody that follows that's actually a member to any of these websites that... They get it's like if bored of watching the seven minute version, watch the hour and twenty minute or the, the, the yeah hour and ten minutes. Here's get a controversial post- question: Does does porn increase crime against women? What would you guess? Because that's been a big sub correlation. There's been some argument that porn is increased crime against women. Why? I don't know. But just people say that. I'm not saying it. Do you agree or disagree? I don't see the correlation. I, I think if uh, if you are the type of person that commit a crime against a woman by watching porn, you're going to commit the crime against her anyway. I think that's an excuse. I just think that maybe that puts you over the top. But you are already you're, you're already wired a little wrong if if porn puts you over the top. So the sci- the, the, <laughs> the, 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 sci- <laughs> the scientific study I read said absolutely porn lowers crime against women. It's like we it makes guys that would be <laughs> out trying to harass women just stay at home. Yeah, which okay. is more relaxing. <laughs> Same argument with video games. Yeah, do video games cause crime? And the odds are they don't. You know, if you look at the people that just mowed down, that, how many people got killed in Barcelona yesterday? 13, 14. Yeah. 14, I think, dead and 100 injured. This, I'm going to be doing a controversial um, podcast here soon on gun control. And here's my argument. I see both sides of the story. I own guns. I see both sides of the story. Obviously, Sometimes guns kill people, innocent people, like a lot of kid. If a kid grabs a gun and he's five and you leave it loaded by the bed and parents an idiot and the kid grabs it and shoots themselves, that's a tragedy. But in terms of banning guns, lowering all crime, you know, like when there was the shooting in Orlando, wasn't what was the name of that? It was like a, a gay club where a guy went in with a machine gun. I think it was an AR. Mm-hmm. And he just started shooting everybody. And people were saying, see, the problem is the AR. Well, guess what? They remove guns from Europe, right? They remove guns from England, remove guns from Spain, and people just switch to cars. In France, they t- a one dude took a van, remember that? And he killed how many people? More than Orlando. In terms of injury, edge, I mean, he like mowed down 100 people. Kids were slaughtered, run over. In in now in in London, you just everybody gets stabbed. You can't ban knives. You, you you can't ban cooking knives. The guy had a cooking knife. So I'm not sure you solve the complete problem by just taking guns away from people. I don't think. I mean, common sense. But what's the benefit of having them? Like guns, I've been kind of. Going back and forth with myself on the whole gun thing, thinking about Charlottesville and 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 you know I think it's it's you should be able to you know have a gun, but to open carry, I think that's a different thing because I was looking at the whole thing in Charlottesville. But the guy, no one with guns did anything. It was the know, car. I know, right? But they could have. You know, Charlottesville could have been ten times worse than what it was. One of the police chiefs had said. Um, the the militias had better equipment than they had. Yes. Um, and so. But they when, didn't. My point is, somebody should have had a gun and shot the guy who was mowing people down. Well, true. But I think the if guy's we, windows was tinted, so you couldn't see the sides. You can only see what's coming at you. But, but say hypothetically, 
you know, a shot goes off, just one shot goes off. Yeah. That could have created, you know, a snowball effect of hell. But I don't know if ever in American history where there's open carry, there's been big shootouts. Has there no, ever No, I'm been? just saying, but it, I don't think there's ever been like a confrontation with the police. I'm not talking about what... Right, the militia or, right. or the or the right versus the left or what have you. I'm talking about with the police. Right. Because the police stood down. Yeah. You know, and I'm not 100% sure why they stood down. I'm sure they were outnumbered. Yeah. But they just stood down. So yeah, hypothetically. Yeah, into that. They're trying yeah, so to say, so, so say now the police know that these guys are armed and they say drop your guns and they don't drop your guns. Then what happens? Well, uh, so at least I know that the the uh, white supremacist people had gotten a permit. So I think you have them there making sure, hey, if you're coming here, they're, obviously you've been given permission. I think they're there to make sure there's no guns. They wouldn't allow any guns. They had guns. guns, though. What do you mean? They had guns. You didn't see the guns? No. They had guns. The militia was, was, was there. They had guns. Yes, they actually see, had how guns. See, that's what I'm wondering. How on earth would they be able to get that in? Well, they if walk. It wasn't it's, like, it wasn't uh, like, like a Charles? ticket. Oh, see, I thought it, it was like you had to get a like ticket to come in. They had a certain area that they were allowed to protest in. No, well, they oh. were supposed to, but they. I what I read, everybody in Charlottesville scattered and went everywhere. So I'm just saying, I, I, if you look at the people lie, but numbers don't. So if you look at the, the numbers, like a state like Texas, and I should research this because I don't know the answer. But most people who are talking about gun control don't know the answer either. But in Texas, where there's a lot more guns, is there more shootings or less? Chicago has, it's illegal to have guns. And I know there's a crap load of shootings there. And nine people killed, I think, just last weekend. It's How did all these guns get here? Dude, guns is like drugs. That shit comes in from Mexico. comes in from manufacturing. Even if you, yeah, yeah guns are going to come in. They're going to come in like heroin. If, if you make guns totally illegal, criminals are going to get guns. It's going to come criminals up. Criminals get them now. But I'm saying they come up, for example, heroin comes up from Mexico. And they literally drive it in cars right up the interstate. And they pack the car. Trust me, they'll be packing 9 millimeters, Glocks. They'll be the same AKs. So... I feel like the problem, and I, I should study this more, but I'm just saying you got to learn how to think critically. So you just look around the world. One of the ways to be smarter is think globally in terms of look for patterns in other countries. So if we go to other countries where there is full gun control, do they still have problems? Norway has no guns, and their biggest crime of the last five years was a Norwegian taking a gun and go, going to an island where all the kids were and shot I forget how many people. 70, 70 people. When's the last time someone in America shot 70 kids? Once or twice? Well, think of this. America has 330 million people. Norway has 5 million. So that means if you, you can't, if, if it's happened once in Norway and it's only 1 40th or 1 30th, no, no, sorry, 1 60th of the size of the United States, that means their gun problem is way worse. They've had more people per capita killed by guns and they got no guns. It was 77. 77. And I think it was kids. I've never heard in America of 77 kids killed. Have you? Mm -hmm. So the basic problem is, and maybe I'll talk about this at to kind of end this, to end this podcast for the last half or whatever. You got to know how to read people. My biggest mistakes in life have always been from the same thing. From misreading and trusting the wrong people. And so if you ask my opinion on immigration, on President Trump, on Hillary Clinton, on gun control, it's all the same thing. You have to create a society and individuals that know how to read people and filter out the good people from the bad people. And I use psychology tests, and I'm telling you, any time in my life, I ignore those tests, I regret it. And so I think it's important for America, that's my opinion on Donald Trump and what he says about Mexico. I mean, you can't stop all immigration, but if we could, look, we're so smart, we've got AI machines that are beating humans in chess. We're able to put, conceivably, we're gonna be able to put people on Mars, 
Why can't we come up with a damn psychological test for cheaply that every person who wants to come into the country, you put a thing on their head, do a lie detector test, ask why can't we use technology to filter people for guns? Somebody walks in, you put them on a damn machine, we got the technology, trust me. And you just go in and you go, have you ever thought of killing someone? If the thing goes beep, you're like, can't get a gun. Yes, somebody would learn how to trick the lie detector machine, but then you make a lie detector machine that counteracts, it's called a patch. Software, when it gets bugged, you patch it. So you just have people, we're smart, we are smart enough. There's tests like that, that already exist, that no one uses. So I think that, I think they should do it for presidents. I strongly believe presidential candidates should be psychologically tested. I don't think Donald Trump or Hillary would have passed a, a test. I'm probably not Bernie Sanders either. I'm not sure. I don't know who would, but I can't believe those are the most mentally sane people to run, to have the nuclear codes. Donald Trump, whether you, I'm not really a fan or a hater of Donald Trump, but is he the best in America to run the whole country? No. Yeah, they got to be. I mean, he's proven it every day. Come on. Rome. I, don't, I don't even think it's up for debate anymore. Well, I don't know. Donald no. Trump. Oh, Zach loves Donald Trump. Trump. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I would, I, you, ought to, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, it's not, I, even, you it's know not even a question. I, I, I won't defend him as a whole, but I will discuss as a individual, no, individual uh, um, issues. Okay, what about the last one? What about well, it seems like there's so comments many. on Charlottesville. So many. Just his uh, comments know, on even... Charlottesville and saying that there's two sides. Was it? You have one side that's racist, and one side is fighting against racism. There's, uh, there's I no, think, I there's think you no can find racism to, on both sides. I doubt it. I, I, I don't think you can find racism. I don't think you can find. I mean, you have. Well, what people, about what about the the uh, the professor? Oh, what was you? I think it was in the Northeast that talked about as far as what he's concerned, all white people can effing die, and eff, let them effing die was a hashtag that was trending in reference to white people. And, there's and oh, Zach yeah, as yeah, yeah, yeah. You Zach find, as the whitest oh, yeah, yeah. man so in America. Absolutely saying, find racism on every side. Oh, I think, I think if we're talking about groups. Charlottesville, then that's different. But yeah, you can find. Yeah, I think you have racism in, in every race. Malcolm X. Yeah. Well, then I would people. say I would say to the Charlottesville thing. That um, and I've I've actually been out of the news cycle this past these past few weeks. Well, I've I'm taking a break in. from it. But was there not on on the uh, the opposing side? Was there not anyone carrying? Or I had heard that there were people carrying bats or carrying clubs as well. It wasn't as though there was a peaceful protest against the uh, white nationalist. Or the KKK. You know, maybe so. There they, were people that were willing to engage in violence. Yeah, well, they had to protect themselves. You'd be stupid if you did. Well, protecting yourself implies, or at least I infer from that, that they were backed up and had to protect themselves from aggression when, when it was. Uh, it's I've seen it reported in a little bit that there were there were aggressors on both sides. I'll give you that. But one preaches hate. Period. Yeah, and I think it's Period. a fort. One, one a fort. side preaches hate. You know, they, they march Somebody the Somebody said, is before. Zach crazy? The KKK and white supremacy was there, Zach. Right. I mean, it's not, it's not even a question. It's, to me, it's not even an argument. It's, it's not even an argument that they marched the night before with tiki torches, I guess it was supposed <laughs> to symbolize. What was the point torch? of the tiki Because back in... in but the, that's Polynesian. They got their... They didn't, right. well, they, 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 wanted, they didn't want to go around with the old school torch. As our ancient know, confederate they ran up to fathers a had tiki. <laughs> tiki. <laughs> that's what they did. Did you know torches. Tiki, that company, did a big tweet saying we did not intend our tiki <laughs> torches <laughs> to be used? <laughs> I like that Zach finds yeah, that so like funny. Like, Please <laughs> do not think we sponsored or donated any, any of this. Yeah, Tiki was not involved. Um, what, what were you saying though? It was from Somebody what? said the Antifa is just as bad as the liberals. No, so so the Antifa comes from the ancient, not ancient, but a word about 100 years ago for anti-fascism. So the people who fought Hitler or Mussolini were called the Antifa and they were militant. Kind of like Martin Luther King Jr. was pacifistically fighting for the cause of civil rights and Malcolm X on the other hand was aggressive 
So in the same way now, and he made his point. He said, we got to be aggressive. The white man's not giving us our rights. It's the 1960s. We're gonna, why do we have to take it? And I, you know, Malcolm X made, Malcolm X was a smart guy. If you read Malcolm X, some of his stuff is a little crazy. Like he literally believed that black, that white people were devils because he had this, anyway, it was a little bit crazy. But on that point of being a, a militant activist, that's what the Antifa or the far left is saying. They're saying, we can't sit back. Look, Confederate statues are still standing. Look, people still going around saying black people shouldn't be able to drink in the same water fountains as white people. And so I can see, I will say this, Donald, I agree with Rome. Why would Donald, I don't understand, going back to what I said, why would Donald Trump make it into an issue? Maybe? Here's why, I, now listen, I am not, I, this is, I have prefaced it, I've been out of the cycle for a few weeks, but making an issue I think would stem from uh, the narrative that there was peaceful protest on one side and all the aggression came from the KKK, the white nationalists. And I think Donald Trump was saying, at least what I took from it is, listen, there is accountability here and it's not just on one side. Right. But so just... I'm not going to come out and just say one side is evil. And I don't think by saying there was aggression on the other side, I don't, I would say that, and in no way would I ever condone or support white nationalists or the KKK. It was a dog whistle for Donald Trump. That's why David Duke immediately responded, But he's disavowed, you. just, but here's the thing, well, he now we're told, we're told with, let's say, Muslim extremism, we're told, hey, listen, don't, don't allow these extremists to sully a whole group of people. Sure. And I think, that should also be the same, I think we, we can say the same, afford the same opportunity um, to someone like a Donald Trump. Just because David Duke goes, thank you Donald Trump, or we believe in Donald Trump, I don't think means that Donald Trump is okay with that, or that... Uh, the, right, it doesn't the, the, prove, but it's not a great yeah. thing if... And, and if Donald Trump KKK, disavows it, is that it, something as a leader of a free listen, country, gonna, you're supposed to disavow that right off top. You're supposed to disavow who it is, white nationalists, Nazis, KKK. You supposed to you supposed to do that immediately. A person died from that. I'm not understand. I don't you know, quite understand. Like Why are they Nazis? That's like the least. I can you know the KKK, Ku Klux Klan. You can understand that people in the South, because I lived in the South. When I moved to uh, when I moved to North Carolina, we drove to this town called Hill uh, Hillsboro or something, North Carolina, and there was a state sign that said. Oh, no, no, it was welcome to, I forget, but it said home of the Ku Klux Klan. They literally used to be a sign in North Carolina when I was a kid, teenager, that still said, welcome to, you know, Hillsboro, home of the Ku Klux Klan. It, was, it wasn't Hillsboro, it was one of the cities. So, I, you can you not excuse it, but you can see why Americans in the South could, because some of their grandfathers were in the KKK. But since when do Americans like Nazis? Nazis are the least American thing in the world. I, I think that shows the stupidity of the, the Nazis? white nationalists throwing on the, the Nazis. I think they all they, drive They don't hate. understand. I'm like, did, didn't they, they see Indiana Jones and, and the Temple of Doom? No, uh, Indiana Jones, what is it? The Raiders, Last Crusade. No, the Raiders the of the Last Ark. The Nazis get annihilated by the tabernacle. What is it? The uh, Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. No, the... the yeah, to be a Nazi is insanity. I mean, to be KKK is insanity, but it's American insanity. Nazi is German insanity. So, what's funny is it's weird. the National Socialist. That's what Nazi That's, stands for. Yeah, and yet you've got uh, a lot of the the fringe right who are obviously no, that hate the, the socialists. Yeah, I know. I don't understand. That's like, what I'm saying. I think it reveals their people are of stupid. history and and. Somebody said, where is the big wall that Trump Trump said he's going to build? Uh, Where's the big wall? Where's health care? Where's anything? Let's talk a little bit here on... Um, I said I was going to talk about something at the end. What was it? I'm oh, testing Zach. I think I wrote, wrote it down somewhere. <laughs> Zach's looking in a brochure of a health uh, supplement. Zach was <laughs> supposed to be my right-hand man. Uh, Zach's looking in a antioxidant bottle. Oh yeah, there was one more thing oh, that really? you had said. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I already gonna, said. Gonna, <laughs> that goes, what you said is there was one more thing you were gonna say. And you wanted to say it at the end. 
I oh, think. That's so helpful, Zach. The uh, $100 money start or business starter, the tearing down of the statues, wasn't Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather, I don't think. No, it was a business thing we were going to talk about. Gun laws. I already talked about that. Hmm. Somebody said, Google it, Ty. <laughs> what was I about to say? <laughs> Ian, Ian, Ian Simmons, it's all good. He's asking why I'm not in the frame. It's, Why you're not take, in a frame? Don't take the price note. It's all good, Ian. <laughs> Somebody's gonna good, make good looking out, Ian. <laughs> That's because Mel and them are supposed to be running this, not me. Mm. Mel, people are accusing oh, you good. of Sam of being racist. <laughs> oh, <it's all> <laughs> don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. I'm not running the camera. Someone said because he is black. No, that's not why. Uh, no, that is not no. why. <laughs> Oh, real estate? Uh, yeah. Talk about exploring space. Here, let's do a final question and answer. I'll answer any question that's intelligent. If you're dumb, you can keep your question. Um, you gotta love the music. <laughs> ah, thoughts on various zodiac signs. Such a good podcast, I've been attentive. Oh yeah, we're gonna be giving away this iPhone 7 here soon. What about the contest? Ah, uh, don't worry, that comes at the end to people who pay attention because I'm gonna bring up some point that I talked about. So if you just didn't pay attention. I you, hope it's you, not, what else was I gonna talk about? <laughs> <laughs> the camera should be motorized. How come black guys get all the fun? I'm not sure what that means. Well, I'll tell you, here's, here's, um, <laughs> here's my, my perspective. Okay, what's your perspective? No, I'm just <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. I do these. The greatest thing about social media comments, it shows you the average intelligence oh, yeah. of the average person in yeah, the world. It's amazing. very scary. The only time you know, I believe in democracy, but sometimes I'm like, wait a second. These are the people who vote. Yeah, it's kind of scary. I kind of like John Denver says bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to meet George Soros? That's from Buddy Holly. What's up? With I'd inter I'd, inter I'd meet him. Inheritance money or earned? Always better to earn your money. People who inherit money, in my experience, are never happy. They're always they always know they inherited it. It makes them slightly weird people. Although there are people who earn their money that are equally weird. But Ty, I want to meet Kate. Kate's mad popular. I know. Ty, why are you so handsome? I thought I'd read that just to bother Zach. <laughs> Zach is very... I need to find... I got to do like the Phil Jackson coaching thing. You got to do the sandwich where every nice comment... I, somebody give Zach a compliment, please, so I can read it out loud. No, I don't, I don't, I don't need... I don't Zach need needs it. Zach is hot. Somebody said, where is Kate? Is that what they said? Zach is hot? Yeah, Crossfire Detroit. Hello, Crossfire Detroit. From the Devil's Bible. Zach, Zach got the <laughs> Crossfire Detroit. Remember that song? It's so cold in, in the D. D. Yeah, yeah. How oh, the, man. Do we supposed to keep, keep it peace? peace? It's all... I forget how it goes. Zach is pretty. Zach, you're a hunky. Zach is a dope fluffer. I like... <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that sandwich comment um, thing from Phil Jackson, everybody should watch Norm MacDonald as he has to give his son a sandwich compliment on YouTube for the Norm Macdonald podcast. Just watch that opening. Zach it's loves there. a guy named Norm Macdonald. For all of you never heard of Norm Macdonald, if you ever met Zach, at least once a day, two things would be brought up. Seinfeld, everything in life is related to a TV show. Some of you don't remember. Well, I don't shows, remember that it. That shows the genius of that show is that... That you remember it. No, no, no. Is that... It, <laughs> That your genius. What was right. going on? You could apply it throughout your life. Okay. All the time. You could. Why the hell episode. is Zach wearing shades? That is a great. You know, Zach has been wearing sunglasses. So let's talk about procrastination. <laughs> Zach has been talking about who here procrastinates on little things that you know you should do. I will tell you there is one danger. One of my favorite quotes from Warren Buffett is the chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they're too strong to be broken. So be careful of procrastinating even on little things because they put sh mental shackles on you. And then when there's something important, you've built such a habit of procrastination. So Zach, That's true. you need to stop procrastinating with the glasses. I actually went and did the eye exam today. 
Awesome. How long has it been? Real talk. We went to the NBA Finals oh in Cleveland. <laughs> it's when you lost your glasses. Was it that? Was that long? Yes. Time? Zach lost his driver's license. Zach, I told Passport. Zach. Here's my theory of Zach. That's Zach okay. needs to get a mail order bride. Either no, from the not. Ukraine, uh, Philippines, or where else? You know Zach? How about I'll do Costa Rica? Zach is a thought. I'll do Costa Rica. Um, you gonna no, so I Zach just, went to Costa Rica need, in um, his teens, and he said he was a god there no, because he's six foot one and he's pale, and they thought he was a. Aztec warrior or it something was, <laughs> descended it was from in the twenties. He came out of an airplane and then when he descended from the sky. Is that why? They wouldn't look me in the eye. <laughs> they would as they walked <laughs> past. They would cross themselves when <laughs> Zach walked by. Ay ay ay. They thought he was Larry Bird. <laughs> hey, hey, today's today's the twenty fifth anniversary of Larry's retirement. Uncle Larry. Today, 25 you just years have ago. all these crazy facts that only you know. Well, he, only because I text Uncle Someone Larry. said, you <laughs> need a Russian girl. I will not date a Russian girl. Why? Because you're American capitalist, so you don't like you. No, no, because I, uh, I don't trust them. Zach. Zach! No, that's... Those We're talking about brides, Russian mail order brides, I would not do that. That's We've been talking about racist. Brazilian girl. That's more Zach speed, actually. Yeah. Brazilian, Puerto Rican. Curvy, big hair. Good, Zach, don't begin too excited. You're making me uncomfortable sitting that close to me. <laughs> Zach, get it. Oh. Zach, I'm what else, moving. Will? What else? Somebody said <laughs> communism can't be spread through or intercourse, Zach. No worries. <laughs> I believe I caught the communism. <laughs> <laughs> you go to a doctor. Doctor, I got the, I got the black lung. Uh... Rome Fernandez says, okay, they're not talking smart anymore. Good luck, guys. <laughs> hey, it's almost midnight. We're talking. You are now in the freestyle mode of this podcast. This is also entertainment. It is not just business. Time from French. Can you say one word in French? Bonne nuit. There you go. What? Pommes frites? Oui. Yes. <laughs> Zach knows oui. I also know a... <laughs> Richard Johnson said, "Wow, this is really live." Wait a minute. There's That's a why dude it's called with the name Richard Johnson. <laughs> yeah, Dick Johnson. <laughs> That's not a bad name. It's Richard C. Johnson. I'm gonna show you what Randy Thompson texted me. Um, ties Adult Swim. Is Zach a virgin? <laughs> <laughs> sure. In France, they think Zach is Napoleon Bonaparte. I was at the Playboy Mansion. Me, we, us three went, and, and Kate last. I guess it was Saturday. Yeah. And the most interesting man in the world was there. So I posted a thing. Let me read this. These are so funny. Randy Thompson <laughs> that sent real? that picture to me. Yeah. I said, "What is the best Dos Equis, most interesting man in the world comment of all time?" And these are so freaking funny. This is my Instagram. If you don't follow me, this picture got ninety thousand likes and seventy two hundred comments. These are my favorite ones that somebody said they said the most interesting man oh, what is your favorite most interesting man damn it i gotta oh i'd have to go back and look at the list um really that's yeah. what you have to go back yeah yeah because i don't remember them by just pull them up real quick these are hilarious hold on one second i just got a dm actually i get it it's crazy DMs. Don't ever try to DM me on Instagram and get mad that I don't answer. I get to so many crazy ones now. I get like 5,000 a day. And most of them are, like I said, I'm worried about planet Earth. That's what I've learned from social media. Be worried about planet Earth, my friends. There are more dumb people. You got some? He won the same Lifetime Achievement Award twice. Okay, that's a weird one. What else? Uh, there's he once parallel parked a train. <laughs> oh, that one's stupid. Come on. There was one. 
He can speak. He can speak French in Russia. Yeah, in Russia, <laughs> he lives vicariously through himself. He I once like he once warned a psychic turning the tables on pseudoscience since two thousand seven. <laughs> yeah, uh, what was the vicarious one? He once lived vicariously. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah, yeah. Can't yeah. find. Zach, what website did you go to? I'm worried about Zach. Sometimes. The most, inter- the best, most interesting man in the world. Well, quotes. it's not a very good website. You know, it's amazing skill that'll help you a lot. Being good at Google. Did you know that if you put... He gave his father the talk. Did you know if you put apostrophes around a word in Google, it'll, it'll only search for that exact word? Did anybody know that? A little practical tip. We've got five more minutes. Okay, let's give away this iPhone. Any other one, good ones, Zach? Um, well, I don't know. You Let me see. Been, been... Zach has the worst sense of humor sometimes. Okay. Yeah, when he drives a car off the lot, its price increases in value. That's a good one. If you were to punch you in the face, you would have to fight off a strong urge to thank him. Oh yeah, I like Superman has pajamas with his logo. Yeah, you're picking some real winners there. <laughs> he kills two stones with one bird. His signature won a Pulitzer. The dark is afraid of him. The sharks have a week dedicated to him. <laughs> I got him to laugh. Oh, I have man. succeeded. I like All right, let's give this away. We got a minute left before we die. Who wants an iPhone 7? <laughs> so here's the question of the day for those who have been listening the whole time. Uh, what should we t- What should we pick on? Help me. Uh, I would say um, what's something that's tricky but not too tricky. We got a minute thirty. Mm, 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 mm. Let's go with uh, something from the Civil War talk. We've been doing a lot of Civil War. Uh, okay, I got one. This one's not a history one. This will take you about five words. Whoever gets the closest. Using my formula to how to start a business for under $100 to win this, the best first answer. It's got to be a good answer and the first one I see. What's the best technique to start a restaurant or figure out how to start a restaurant for under $100? Ready, set, go. I love (laughs) you. The best way for this iPhone 7. Have passion, no. There you go. Brody on Twitter won. Spend a hundred bucks on food, cook five different dishes, and have people come eat at your house. Now if you didn't win, I'm giving away the Apple Watch. One more, this is only for Instagram or Facebook. Woo! Wait you gotta go. Attention, bro. You gotta go real fast. What city was the big riot? Only these. What, what city was the big riot in? Instagram or Facebook? Boom. Where we go? Michael Rabatin. Charlotte. Oh, no, no. He's Michael. Charlotte. Apple. Yeah. Oh, Charlotte. You know, it's, it's yeah, Charlottesville. James Thompson won. There we go. Charlotte was incorrect. It was Charlottesville, my bad. James Thompson, you won. It was Charlottesville. Instagram got cut off. They're probably like, no, I was going to say it. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thank you, Rome. Thank you, Zach. No. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Sam. We are out. Make sure you check my Instagram. Follow me on Snapchat, at Ty Lopez. If you want to see my behind the scenes, what I do in a day, Snapchat. What was that? That wasn't me. Oh. Goodbye, Pee Wee.